And he would do this pretty often where I would want to pull up my pants, but he would be like, no, no, don't do that. I'm like, what do you mean, Jesse? Like, stop, man. I'm trying to pull up my pants. He's like, no, no. Come on. Like, and he would just do his little laugh. Like, <laughs> and then, but then that's what that's when he did it, right? Um, and then I went into the silent prayer. And first he pulled out my boxers and then he starts rubbing it and he's like, Hey, uh, why is it getting hard? I'm like, why are you asking this? Like, of course it's gonna get hard if anybody touches it. Like, come on, it's a it's a penis, man. Come on. And then he would he would laugh and then and then he did it, right? And then I, I I'm just shocked also, but I'm also letting him do it. Um, which is a, a sh shameful for me to admit, but I mean, well, I, I mean, Samuel, this is, this is, this is where I'm getting at it too. I mean, the fact that you're telling us this, I, I can't imagine how difficult that is. So let me give you a quick rundown of the timeline of this, because I started, like I said, on the, on the interview, I went up on in May, 2020 and briefly, the reason I want to bond is because I was like really, really depressed. I, I like I had a lot of depression, um, like to the point where like I would self harm, not cut myself, but I don't even want to get into it. But anyways, um, then I discovered Jesse and what he said first about forgiving your mother and real men are supposed to be not angry. I was like, oh man, that's I I'm angry and. I feel like a weak man, you know, like my identity. I didn't, I didn't really understand my identity. So as a young man, so as soon as Jesse opened back up, I went straight, you know, to the, to the service, uh, live service. Cause I live in South central and he, his, his, uh, bond is like, uh, 15 minutes away from where I live. So first time I ever go there, I'm like, Hey, hello, my name is Samuel. Uh, thank you for, you know, your message, it really helped me a lot. I forgave my parents, I forgave my dad, I forgave my mom, and now, like, my life is, I'm growing, like, I'm letting go of all the old stuff. And uh, so I want to thank him. And then uh, he also asked me, what do you do? I said, I have my own auto detailing business. And uh, at the time, it wasn't named Samuel Mexican Car Wash Boy. It was named SCLA Auto Detailing. Um, so... The reason I changed it to Samuel Mexican Cars Boy, a quick detour of the story, is because he started calling me that because that's what he saved me on his number as. So I was like, OK, I'm going to just run with it. I mean, people know me as Samuel Mexican Cars Boy. It's me. It's my face. I'm the brand. Cool. I'll run with it. So then anyways, that was a little detour. Anyways, at the end of the service, he promised me, hey, you could work on my you could walk, detail my truck. And I said, cool, man. Like man i'm gonna get to work on jesse's truck this is this is nuts right now um so so we exchanged numbers and then this is in private like if i don't know if any i assume you guys haven't been to the bond church but it was like it was in orlando um where after everybody just talks to jesse talks amongst one another you know the 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 breakdown of the service and i go to him and i'm like jesse uh, another thing that's on me, I was abused when I was a boy. And that's really like, I can't, I don't know if I could let that go. And he's like, forgive and let go. Just let it go. Uh, all thoughts are lies. Uh, past doesn't exist. I'm like, you know what? That makes sense. So then I was like, okay, cool. I, I would not pay much attention to the thoughts telling me about that stuff, you know? So I was growing, I was growing. This was in May, 2020. And I met Tony and Anthony at the 21 convention in October 2020 because that's when Jesse, out of nowhere, and mind you, like, to me, I consider myself still like a newbie, you know, like not even a year of knowing Jesse. He invites me, all expenses paid to 21 Studios convention. I didn't even know who they were, honestly, uh, but I went because I was like, man, I get to represent Jesse, like be like Jesse's bodyguard and, and just a rep, like a ambassador for bond because i was like man i've been helped so much and up to this point no weird stuff and also no weird stuff happening at the 21 convention i shared a room with jesse it was just jesse and i in one room and then nick uh gonzalez in the other room right next door and I, you can uh 
uh, confirm that, Tony, because if you remember, yeah. you picked us up. Oh, I remember. I remember well. Yeah, absolutely. You, picked, you like, you escorted us, and and I walked out of the room with Jesse. So mm -hmm. uh, and no weird stuff happened that 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 trip at all. If anything, it got me closer to Jesse because we had like late night talks, like about life and about my insecurities, um, things that you know was like real deep to me, and he would share with. He would tell me about, you know, about how to overcome that. And I was like, cool, man. So I left that that trip leave, feeling like on cloud nine. So um, fast forward to March, early March or late February. Uh, I would have to confirm that on my schedule because the way I keep track of the dates is not because I wrote them down. And all, and here's here's the thing to all the people that want proof. I, I don't want to remember this stuff. You get me? Like, I didn't want to be like, hold on, let me, Jesse, you, you're going to do this to me? Let me record real quick. This is like, yeah, let's do it. Like, that's weird. Uh, I wasn't even thinking that to expose him would be to expose myself. Like, and I wasn't ready for that. But anyways, um, late March, early February, whatever. Uh, I had just cleaned the bond office because every, I got hired in December of 2020. I got, Somewhere around that time, I got hired to work at the bond office every single Friday. So um, I'm at the bond office, and up to this point, Jesse and I are close. We're already, you know, long hugs. Um, he, him telling me he loves me like a son. Um, he would call me every night, not every night, but every other night, check in. How, how was work? How was your business? How, was, how are you dealing with life? Oh, good, Jesse. Thank you. Thanks for checking in. But it wasn't until that day I went over to his his uh his room and uh, it was a Friday night. And I remember and this is also to the because someone asked the question of how, how can you say he pulled on your pants? Like and to that defense, you made me rem thanks to whoever left that comment because you made me remember. Um, At this point, I was already working out like consistently because i was like you know motivated i was like feeling on top of the world i was working out consistently trying to make myself stronger so so was jesse so i would take off my shirt and he would look at my 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 body like oh man like and i would do it because oh jesse let me show you the work i've been doing look look check this out i'm not proud of that i probably shouldn't have done that but hey man whatever and then at one point I would tell him, oh, I'm working on squats. And then he's like, oh, let me see your legs. So I, at first it started with like pulling up, you know, my pants, like from the, from the, from the, what, the boot up to the leg. But then it became, oh, take off your pants. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna just pose right here. And by the way, the whole time the, the, the door is locked. So no one saw this stuff. Um, so th that's what led to the moment where it first happened i had i believe i had taken off my pants and then it was just me sitting in like my boxers and then him kneeling in front of me because i was about to, oh and he would do this pretty often where i would want to pull up my pants but he would be like no no don't do that i'm like what do you mean jesse like stop man i'm trying to pull up my pants he's like no no come on like and he would just do his little laugh like <laughs> And then, but then that's what, that's when he did it. Right. Um, and then I went into the silent prayer and first he pulled down my boxers and then he starts rubbing it and he's like, Hey, uh, why is it getting hard? I'm like, why are you asking this? Like, of course it's going to get hard if anybody touches it. Like, come on, it's a, it's a penis, man. Come on. And then he would, he would laugh and then, and then he did it. Right. And then I, I, I'm just shocked also, but I'm also letting him do it, um, which is a, a sh shameful for me to admit. But I mean, well, I have, I mean I to. Samuel, this is this is this is where I'm getting at it, too. I mean, the fact that you're telling us this, I, I can't imagine how difficult that is. I, I truly can't. What what is your when you we talked in private, what is your reason to tell this now. I think this is a really important question. And we, we, you answered me when I asked you this. Yeah, hold on. 
hold on, Tony. Let me clock out of my job. I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just mute the, my mic. Okay. All right. All right. So, boyos, what do you think so far? I'm curious, Uncle Guns and Woody. I mean, you're getting, it's, you're getting. I mean, this is, you know, this well, is it's definitely hard to listen to. It's I'll very difficult that. to listen to. All right, I'm back. Um, yeah, so like I heard Woody say, it's hard to listen to. Man, that's the reason why it took me so long to come out. And what's so shameful about it is that even after that first happened, and I'll answer your question, Tony, um, but I just want to say one more thing. Even before, like when it first happened, I went home and I was like, that's it, man. Like all your, all your insecurities of you being a homosexual, they're true now. Like, this is what you were avoiding, and now it's true. So that was so hard to deal with because I never wanted to be that, but somehow I I allowed it to happen, and that was so hard to admit to myself. So the next day, and I got to add this, and then I'll answer your question, but the next day I had a job, and I was there the whole day, right? And uh, the whole time I'm thinking about it, like, oh my God, this happened. How can you let this happen, man? Like, what's wrong with you? Uh, all of those thoughts inside inside of my mind. And I called Jesse in the afternoon after my job. And he's like, um, just let it go. Our thoughts are lies. And I said, Jesse, I'm dealing with now. I'm questioning if I'm homosexual or not. And he's like, he laughs. And he's like, that's what Satan told me, too. And I'm like, damn, this guy. He's like, instead of helping out, he's like making me feel worse about it. So then he, and then after that, he's like, just let it go. All thoughts are lies. You know, his whole spiel, all thoughts are lies all the time. Um, so, and the, the last time that I saw him face to face, he came, see, he came to my house unannounced after a, fr a Friday show or something, I think. And my mom woke me because I still live with my mom. I'm, yeah, that's beta. <laughs> um, but I'm looking to get out. <laughs> um, but I live in the back. All right. I live in the back. I pay rent. I pay bills. I work all the time. I'm not, you know, I'm not proud of it, but I'm also, you know, whatever. Anyways, my mom wakes me up. She's like, Samuel, there's someone, there's a black man outside for you. I'm like, what? I look at my phone and I noticed that it was Jesse calling me and he left texts. Or I think he just called and left voicemails and then i'm like oh i knew exactly who it was so i went out there and in, in hindsight i wish i would have reported his ass um because it would have been like he's on my property you know <laughs> public property so it would have been like proof for all the proofers um but uh but anyways he he's like he, he wanted to cut he like i opened my gate he wanted to walk into my gate and i'm like nah you're no longer you're not coming in anywhere close to me anymore what do you want? He's like, oh, I just wanted to tell you something. Here, come, come here, come to my truck. So I went in his truck and I was kind of scared because Jesse, uh, he carries a weapon in his car. It's not a firearm, but it is a weapon that could cause a lot of damage. So as any like famous man should, you know, or, or anybody that's in a public image, they should have something to protect themselves or any man, honestly. Um, so I was scared. I was like, damn, is he about a freaking like, uh, off me right now because because of you know he's scared because that was very irrational for him to come and come and come to my house unannounced Has but he anyway, ever your house before before yeah he had he had so he he had come to my house once when i was painting my sister's room and he just came and he's like oh i want to see your work like let me see your work and and i took pride in my work i take pride in everything i do like my, as far as jobs go I um, mean, the cars that I wash, everything. Um, so I wanted to show him. And so he came and then he sat in my my couch, talked for a little bit. He was like, you know, we had a little conversation then and there. No weird stuff happened. But anyways, back to when the last time I saw him, he's he, he's telling me all this spiel of like, look, Samuel, I know you're like dealing with this. And you don't know what to do, but I just want to warn you not to tell anybody your business. Anything you've been through, don't tell anybody because they're just going to turn on you like they turn on everybody. Like, 
if you notice anybody that shares other vices, all that happens to them is that they, uh, that they get turned on, you know? So I'm like, look, Jesse, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm going to tell people, but all I know is I'm done. I'm done with Bond. I'm done with you. I want nothing to do with you ever again. Don't ever come to my house ever again. And I also told him, look, Jesse, I remember the, the day that you, um, they, that after the day after it first happened, I called you like scared and, and like confused. And you told me that Satan told you that I was gay. And after that day, I would just question myself, always question myself. I never, ever questioned Jesse, which is another shameful thing. And it goes to the cult personality, like the cult psychology, that you don't question the person that is causing damage to you. You question yourself. And you, yeah, Jesse says, don't put me on a pedestal, but he he sets it up to where you do put him on a pedestal. So anyways, what I told him is like, look, I never questioned you, but what I should have asked you, uh, I should have asked you if you're gay. And he's like, no, 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 no. Before I even said it, he said, no, 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 no. And then I knew then th this guy is gay. Like he's re he is actually gay, but. Because, you know, when you ask somebody a question and they're guilty, it's not all the time. But if they have the answer immediately before you finish what you say, that's like a guilty conscience to me. How, um, how else did he explain that to you? What happened? How did he explain that to you when you asked him that question? That he's not, oh, that he's not. Are you gay? Uh, he just said, no, no, no. And he said what I did between what happened between you and I. It was just, it was a mistake. Like I, I fell into it. Like, like it was just a mistake. Is this, is this, what? It was a mistake. It wasn't like because he's a homosexual. Is because it was a mistake for him. So then I'm like, all right, Jesse. I mean, I don't know what else to say. I like wasn't having it anymore. I'm like whatever, man. So I just, I was like, that's it, Jesse. No more. Don't ever show up to my house again. Don't ever call me. You and I were nothing anymore don't ever call me your son don't ever tell me you love me like a son because i understand now you do not love me if you love me you would have never done this stuff and uh anyways to answer your question and i just wanted to add those things because like i don't know i just it was a mental uh like consciousness or whatever stream consciousness as they call it but uh to answer your question why am i doing this um because I got to warn people. I got to warn other young men and women, too, of of Jesse. Like, he's, he's a very, very seductive man. He's clever like a fox. He is a... Uh, he's very influential. Um, and he is a liar, man, straight up. It was hard for me to admit that, you know, or like to see that, to face that reality for a long time. But uh, yeah, ultimately it's because he's using the name of Jesus Christ, the religion of Jesus Christ um, and God in like a very evil way. And so to offer a little clarity as to what led me to do it, that was, that's my why. But what led me to like come out and, and, and go on his documentary is because when Patrick Rooney released the, the articles in November of uh, 2021, I believe. Yeah, yeah, just last year, November 2021, yeah. Um, he, that like shook my whole world. I was like, oh my God, now I, what I went through is not like a fluke. It's not a one-time thing. Is And I saw what Jesse had, like he wanted for me, you know? And just to, just to set the record straight, um, I never had sex with Jesse. Um, never was. Uh, I never did anything to him. I never saw him naked. I never did anything to him, ever. It was always him coming on to me, and I just was, like, helpless about it. Like, Because from the first time it happened, I decided to go back after, like, a few moments, a few days of thinking about it, mulling it over in my mind. I ultimately decided to go back and hey, that's on me. That's my fault. I'll take full responsibility for it. Um, 
but he would he told me I'll never do it again. And he would he did it again, but by this second time he did it, it was like, oh again, and I let it happen again. Oh man, well, it's like my defense got less and less, and 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 sin works like that. Like when you when you do sin, it's like a downward spiral. You just can continue committing it, and committing it, and you like, um, what's it called? Justify it in your mind as okay. You like become in denial of the sin. So then Patrick released those. Um, it, it was like a six month thing between Jesse and I, right? Something like that. I don't know. Um, let's just say six months. I know that the. And I spoke to a friend yesterday that was like, hey, man, you got to be more clear when you speak because you open the door to like suspicion of if you're credible, if you say like, oh, it, it might have been this or it might have been that. But my defense to that is that. I don't have like exact dates. I don't, I don't, I haven't wrote this down and said, this is the date. This is a date, you know? So anyways, Patrick Rooney released those things. And then I was like, that's it. I can no longer um, neglect what I have seen um, or what I've experienced. And I know now what Jesse has in store for me is not good. It led me to look at myself, how shameful, how ashamed I was for letting it happen how much in sin I was, it caused me to like read verses in the Bible of like God uh, uh, saying very clearly those homosexuals will not inherit the kingdom of God. And I was like scared. I was like, oh, my God, that's it. I'm not going to, you know. So um, then and then also it was like, I saw Martin Francis, Fabian, Asensio, and other Armand outside of Bond protesting. And I was like, I can't walk up next to those guys. And they show me their signs of saying Jesse's a homosexual predator. And I look at them in the eye and say, either just look away and act like it never happened or look him in the eye and say, no, that's not true. Like, what kind of man would that make me? So I was like, hey, nah, man, I can't do that. So. Anyways, after that, it took me a while. It took me like a month to tell Martin Francis. And then I talked to Patrick Rooney. And when I talked to Patrick Rooney, he went, he, that was it for him. That was like the last straw because he realized that it was going on now, you know, in, in the moment as I'm talking in the past and now or recently. And then that led to. I and that led to more like aggressive protesting from Martin to where he got served with a with a restraining order. He went to court. He beat it. Jesse and James lied in court. There's legal documents to prove it. They lied and said that Martin appeared to have guns, that James stated that he once went to a, a theater with with Martin Francis and James was like scared of him because he said, I have a gun like to protect myself. And then you got to think about it like James and Jesse, they say that they're all pro Second Amendment, all alpha. But why is it why is it scary? Why are they trying to build a case against Martin Francis that he's somehow like wacky because he, he was carrying a gun way long ago in a in a um in a theater, although it was illegal, he was illegally carrying and Martin faced the consequences for that. But still, like, come on, man, you can't call yourself a, a conservative. And if you're like bringing that up, you know, and then another thing Jesse said, there's a video on this. You can go watch it on Martin Francis YouTube. Jesse straight up lied, said some like real like lies of Martin. And when you think about it, Martin, Martin has been a a diehard supporter of Jesse for like 30 years. Long time, man. Like, it's not even funny. Like, I've been to the Bond house. Martin Francis would buy lunch, would buy clothes for Jesse, would do his laundry, would vacuum his room. He was like Jesse's right hand man. So it, these things are serious. Like, it's not it's not a joke. But anyways, Mar Tony, you got anything to say? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> couple things um first i want to i want to tell everybody that like for samuel to come out and say this 
you guys do understand that the repercussions if he was lying would be disastrous with this right now. I mean, you guys understand that Jesse is not, he's not Tony Bruno. He's not Uncle Guns. He's not Woody Johnson. He's a major public figure. Okay. And to, to say this live right now, I mean, I mean, we, we got in depth, of course, when we talked this week. Yeah. There's one thing I do want to ask you now. You brought it up to the, to Hermes. I got to ask you this question. Did Hermes leave Bond? Yes. Uh, he left Bond. Because of this situation? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So real brief, I don't want to talk too much on a friend, you know, mm -hmm. that I haven't gotten his permission, but long, real brief, Mar uh, Hermes asked me, Hey, um, is one uh, a mutual friend told Hermes after okay after I told him a mutual friend of Hermes and I, which also was a Bond member at the time, who also left after I told him because he automatically believed me. Um, um, this friend told Hermes right in in a lunch after service after a Sunday service, and Hermes was like, "What?" That makes sense. No wonder Samuel is not coming to church anymore. So then he called me that night. He was like, hey, I need to speak to you. And I was like, yeah, uh, I'll let I'll tell you. So I told him everything, everything I'm telling you guys. I told Hermes um, and everybody, anybody that's ever asked on a phone call, I've told him the same stuff. Um, and then after that, Hermes was like, hey, man, look, uh, I, I believe you. And then he was like, uh then after that, he made his decision. Um, he had to leave, but before that, he 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 went to Jesse, and uh, in Jesse's office, he said, "Hey, Samuel told me this. Are these things true?" And Jesse was like, "What?" Samuel said, "What? No, let me let me call Samuel up right now so he could come and so we could settle this right now." And Hermes was like, "Okay." Jesse never called me. He he didn't get me on the phone. And, and right then and there, Hermes knew, yeah, something's off with this. Because if he's not willing to have me on the phone on a on a three-way conversation and let everything out in light, then something's wrong. So then after that, Hermes made a decision to leave. And I hope if Hermes is watching this or hears this, man, I hope, you know, I didn't share too much. And if I do, please correct me on that. Well, I think that somebody like... Hermes needs to speak up too because sitting back and being silent and you guys are friends, correct? Yeah. Yeah, we are, but it's, it's a personal decision. I'm not, I don't, I didn't tell people so they could like join forces with me and like, let's bring them down. I told them because I feel like it's my duty as a, as a man, as a Christian man to tell the truth, especially once they like started clicking, like, dang, Jesse's, using his influence to as a as an evil way like he really is using his influence and the things he says about jesus christ and god he's really not about it so that needs to be exposed like that like anthony johnson he's exposing the fraud i agree with that exposing the 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 fakeness especially i think in a spiritual in a spiritual matter like someone that is a pastor of a church. Although since these allegations came out or these things came out, I'll call them allegations, I guess. Um, uh, Jesse has stopped calling himself a pastor. You know, he still says, Oh, this is Je church with Jesse Lee Peterson, but he has made it a point to say, guys, I'm just Jesse. I'm not a pastor. Um, God gave me this. Um, and if you think I'm a, pa if you think I'm above you, then something's wrong with you, like guilting the people into following him. Like, and well, then what if you heard that clip, so when was the last time? Because Jesse came on my channel right after Christmas. And I think the last time was either right before that. Correct. Jesse came on right after Christmas. You said, yep. Not too long after he was sick, maybe a, a month or so after he was sick. Or, or passed out on the air. Yeah, I remember that. Um, so what was your question again? So 
so the last time was very close to when he came on this channel. This channel. The, the last time of, of what? With you and him. Hey, Tony? Yeah. Lost you okay. for uh, Yeah. Last time what? The last time that he... Sorry, I'm, I'll, a call came in. But, um, it's okay. The last time that that anything happened with you and him. Oh, with you, with him and I. Um, the last time it happened, I'll go to my calendar right now. I see we got. 25, 26 people watching right now. So uh, I'm just curious of what you guys are thinking in the chat. I see Jubin. I see he's, uh, he's made a few comments. Mr. Finn, I wonder if you're still watching. Um, this is this is hard to listen to. It is. I get that. But Oh, hello. My bad. Yep. No, go ahead, man. Oh, no. I said November 6th for sure. I'm, okay. I remember that being the last time it happened. And it was the same thing where... I'm laying down in the in the in the couch, but now I'm not in the silent prayer. Now I'm like watching TV, right there, and he's uh, touching me, you know. And I'm just like out watching cops on the on the TV. Like it's man, it's sad, honestly, to say it, but um, him just touching me, like I don't know, man, like. Like me just allowing it, like, oh, this is a normal thing to be happening. I'm just watching cops on the on the TV. It's it's uh sick and shameful on my part. Primal man. I thought he said he didn't remember when any of this happened. He didn't write it down. Do you understand? You didn't understand what he said. And you look like a complete asshole right now just so you know hey primal man what i mean by that is that i don't have like exact dates so for well i do have some exact dates because i reference them to days i had detailing jobs because as a business owner especially if you offer a service you got to write people in your schedule otherwise you might forget so i just write that down so i i remember those as like rep points of reference i didn't go down and write like after it first happened today, Jesse did this to me and I felt like this and this is what I think I should do. I didn't, I didn't journal it. I didn't take pictures. I didn't try to incriminate Jesse because I was incriminating myself. There, you got your answer. So you can, you and Gonzo can laugh about it. And hey, look, I don't, I don't mind those guys like, uh, being skeptics and stuff you know i really it's a it's a time to listen though you know yeah it is i get it I... there's a time there's a time to be a bitch and now ain't the time primal man i don't know i just i'll just say this that listening to pastor michael foster has like helped me a lot the past few days and kind of put me in the right track i've been reading the bible um Trying to not, not let this. Uh, for, for, like, hang on. First of all, don't tell me to simmer down. You can talk about this to your two viewers sometime, okay? <laughs> Fuck. You still there, Samuel? We lost. Yeah, I'm here. I just had to send a text out. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been, I appreciate. Pastor Michael Foster. Um, have you I've been, to him? Uh, real brief, like in texts. Um, Good. But I have been listening to like his sermons and Good. his his podcasts and stuff. Because, um, yeah, I just you know I'd rather listen to what he's already said than like I don't know. I I just feel like it's the right thing to do to like listen to somebody content before you kind of talk to them mm -hmm. so you can see where you know where they're at and how they can help you um 
but uh but yeah i've been i've been reading the bible and man i'm 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 really um i'm i'm proud of you because i'm not i'm not seeing any anger you know yeah man i it's hard to have any anger when i'm ashamed for the things that i let happen you know like even anger to myself like yeah it's easy to have anger to myself but and I, at Jesse, I, like I told him, I told him multiple times, I forgive you, Jesse, but that doesn't mean what you think it means. He wanted me to like remain close to him. He offered me um, sh a show. He, and actually, the last day I ever went to church, which is super weird. And I, okay, I also say December thirty first is when I first confronted Jesse about everything. I sat on that same couch. I looked him in the eyes. I said, Jesse, I need to talk to you. I said, I read what Patrick had to say. Now I realize what you did to me was really evil. It showed me that all your all thoughts or lies um, spiel is all fake because the thoughts that were telling me to get out and, and get up and pull up my pants and get out like a man, you were telling me ignore all thoughts. But what was my thoughts were telling me was get out. But I ignored them because I was listening to you. So you always say, look within, right? Look within. God is within you. Do the sign of prayer. Look within. But you made me look without. You made me listen to your voice while you did what you had to do to me, you know, while you would get up, stroke it, walk away, get up, do it. And uh, and then I told him also, like, you always say you love me, right? You love me. And I told him. And I realize you do not love me because a man that loves someone would not do that to another man. Um, and then he just looks at me like this. He's like, uh, well, I mean, I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. And I was like, all right, Jesse, well, that's it. I just want to let you know, look, I forgive you because I understand my my role in this. I'm not and I don't and I've struggled with this. Like I almost put up a a post on YouTube like, hey, I'm one of the victims, but it's hard for me to consider myself a victim, man. Like, honestly. Um, and, and I talked about that earlier tonight is about, you know, can a man be a victim? You know, but the whole point is, is that Jesse is not selling cars. OK, he's selling Christianity. He fights against yeah. homosexuality. He fights against all this stuff. He's the biggest proponent of it. He screams at it every day. And that's the problem. Yeah. The problem that I see. And it takes, you know, I, the fact that you came on here and talk or, or talking about it is kind of blowing my mind. I mean, I like I said, I'm not doing this again. I'm not doing this. You, you, I offered if you wanted to come on, I said, if it's no big deal, right? You, I mean, we got our text message. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you yeah. want to. And you said you weren't ready. And I accepted that. I said, that's fine. I said, don't worry, you got brothers behind you. And and I'm I you were not forced into this. I didn't coerce right. you into doing anything. I mm -hmm. I you know, but I also feel that it's okay to get your story out if you're willing and you're ready is what's most important. If you're ready to do this and talk about it, which you were, then that's fine. You know, and that's important to me. What's important to me, Samuel, is you in this whole thing. None of this other crap. And that's what I tried to convey to other people. I was concerned about you. That was the biggest, the biggest thing. Anthony is concerned about you. Michael Foster is concerned about you. This has nothing to do with Jesse and has everything to do with you. But I think it's it it took a it took a lot of guts. It took a lot. You you have you're it's not like people don't understand. It's not like the the company gave you tons of money to talk about this or I paid you to come on here. This is nope. of your own free will. You know, this is this is this could have huge legal ramifications. And the fact you know that the fact that you would come on here and talk about it. Yeah, I'm willing, like I said earlier, and I'll say this to the camera, I'm willing to go under oath. All the things that I said in this video could be used against me and I'll clarify the story if needed with details. It doesn't matter. I'm willing to do it. Um, but I don't think Jesse 
and this is not to goad him into doing a lawsuit because honestly, I, I, I've never been in the law system. I've never been in the legal system. I never went to jail. I never had to get a lawyer. So I'm not like challenging him, take me to, to, to court. But all I'm saying is I'm willing to put my right hand on the Bible and under oath say these things and looking everybody straight in the eye. Yeah, that's tough, man. You got a lot of strength, bro. And I'm, 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 I'll commend you on your, on your strength in Christianity still. It's, uh, it's surprising that you're not angry at this point. Um, it really is. I'm, I, I got to commend you on that. You know? Man, well, like I said, thank you. And, uh, Anthony, Anthony had me cracking up with the things he was saying, like <laughs> the ways he was imitating the, <laughs> the guys he calls dumb and stuff. Hey, I would consider myself like one of those dumb guys that fell for Jesse. So, Hey, if it could happen to me, it could happen to anybody, I guess. Um, but uh, but I appreciate you, Anthony, um, and Pastor Michael Foster. Although I haven't spoken to him on the phone, just through text, he's he's been a lot of help. You know, you guys have been a lot of help the past few days. And the reason I decided to come on here is because uh, I'm like, damn, these guys. I. I also, in myself, I saw that there needs to be a little clarification because the, the documentary was real short. You know, some people are like, what the hell? Why would he let that happen? Or why now? Or yeah, I, I see a couple streams where, you know, and I had asked you that question, you know, and I mean, to give it a little more context, you were sexually abused as a child. Yeah. I mean, we got a little bit deeper into this in our phone call, too. Yeah. Um, so, but I will do commend you for coming on here. And talking about it, I can't imagine it, that it's easy. I just can't. I can't imagine very, it's easy. Very brave. I commend you as well, sir. Very yeah. brave. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle Guns. Appreciate it. So, um, you know, like I was telling telling you privately and told people in the in the stream tonight, this is just the beginning. It's not the end. And I think that at this point, I, I'm just I'm just shaking my head. I have been since we spoke. Yeah, man, I sometimes I like this thing is hard, man, like the and not to like bring pity upon myself because as a man, you got to go through tough things. And, you know, shout out to Pastor Michael Foster. Like, um, I think God um, sets up shame as a way to like cor as a correct thing, a uh, design in our souls. And I feel a lot of shame for it. And it's caused me to like really straighten up like a lot. Um, so I'm grateful for that, you know. Thank God, thank Jesus Christ, my my Lord and Savior. Um, That's incredible to me that you can even say that now. It just it kind of blows my mind. It really does. It gives it gives me faith in faith that you can say that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Really because you know, like, that's why it's important to, like, fellowship, you know, like, and in this, in the, and I love Christianity for that. And past, I got to shout out um, Pastor Michael Foster, and I got to call him Pastor out of respect. Um, um, he's helped me, like, in the short amount of time I've been listening to him, set me straight, you know, and I think he would tell me, and I might be wrong, but he would tell me, like, what you're feeling is like right that you're feeling that way, you know, like the shame and the guilt. Now, I don't know what he might say to like how to overcome it, but oh, actually, I might yeah, have faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that's it. Um, uh, but yeah, like I forgot where I was going with that. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to give my gratitude to you guys, man. Well, I appreciate you, man. Like I said, it takes a lot to come on and talk about it. You know, if if there was, if somebody had stuffed your pockets with money or anything, but from what I understand, you know, it's like I told a few people, Samuel's kind of alone right now, and we're not going to let him be like that. We're just not going to do it. So appreciate that. Yeah, I was I was at work, and every day at work, I. I do push-ups every hour. 
I come on my break, I do like 50 dips or push-ups. I'm like really trying to make myself strong, you know, like physically and mentally. Um, so, uh, and spiritually, most importantly. Uh, but uh, anyways, I got to get going. Uh, Joshua Elderman, thank you. Um, Elderman, that, 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 that last name sounds familiar. I don't, I don't know if it's, I read a book about, uh, biblical manhood by a guy with the last name Elderman. And it was pretty cool. I like the way he put it. Um, but it might not be the same guy, but it just reminded me of that. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. And well, Samuel, I appreciate your time. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, you can reach out to me. You know, we're yep. we chatting in private. So, yep. but um, you, you've you got an army behind you now. And I do appreciate you telling your story. Um, it, it's nothing that... I don't, I don't want people to think I'm proud to have you tell that story because I'm not. I'm, I'm, I, I'm going to say it, uh, it bothers me. It bothers me, but I'm just glad that other people can kind of see what I've been seeing for the past week, you know? Yeah. I think that's important, you know? And as men, you know, if we don't stick by our brothers, I think that's important, you know? I really do. I think it's important to to stand by your brothers. I'm not going to discount you like a lot of people have. I'm not going to do it. Again, after hearing your story, I'm just not going to do it. It's not going to happen. So. I appreciate that, man. It, it's got me really like thinking about the psychology of someone that comes out with these type of, uh, of, of stories, of allegations. You know, how to deal, how would I deal with it if someone came to me in the past, I might not even know, I guess, but now I really got to like, I have like a firsthand experience, I guess. So my point is that the psychology is like really, uh, it's almost like irrational at some times where that's why all these questions are like, well, why would he stay? It doesn't make sense. Or why would he let him do that? It doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't. It didn't make sense to me. That's why it was so sh sh shameful to like even tell anybody in the beginning, you know? Does everybody, everybody watching right now and everybody watching in this, in the future, do you, do you all understand now while I say I don't give advice, I give support? And I think that's what a lot of people need to do. They need to support their friends, people that are in trouble, people that are in need. Support is so much more valuable than advice. So have I given you one bit of advice, Samuel? Yeah. <laughs> Which like, was uh, well, one, well about, about law maybe. Yeah, yeah. about law, which is, yeah. 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 which is I appreciate that because I, like I said, I, I'm I didn't plan. Oh, how, I'm gonna get a lawyer before I do all this. No, nah, I don't have honestly don't have that much money to to even do that. You know, I didn't even I never thought like I'm gonna need a lawyer, and you know why? Because I'm not lying. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not in fear of getting sued. That's what it truly is. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but most of my stuff is I got you. I got your back. I'm gonna yep, support. You. Support, yeah. yeah. Like the past few days. Think, yeah, the only thing I did say was, yeah, you need to get some legal counsel. Yeah, you know, I don't know if I'd call that advice versus just a recommendation. Yeah, recommendation or a a thing to think about. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but yeah, as far as like no advice, you just tell me, hey, text me, you text me every day. Hey, just want to let you know I'm here for you. You got, you got brothers behind you. You got me behind you to support you. So absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And when I say that to somebody, I mean it, you know, so yeah, I'm available yeah. for you 24 seven. I mean, yeah, well, I'm a, I'm a peace out. I got to get home. Uh, it was it was good being on here. Uh, thanks, Uncle Guns. And I, I read some of the comments. I think Joshua, uh, I appreciate it, man. Uh, and God bless you. God bless you, Tony. And God, God bless you all. Peace. All right. Peace. Thanks, Peace, brother. Peace. Take care. Thank you. Yep.